just, I don't know, there's just a kind of creative fire about Manchester. It's one of those things that I think if you analyse it and try to work out why, you might even not find the answer. And in, in a way, it's just such a hard hitting, in the nicest sense of the word, city, I think, musically speaking, always has been. But you know, you look at the Halley Orchestra and the fantastic tradition that it has as an, as an orchestra, that's, that's put some real firm roots now, I think, in the city. I think it's the quality of what they receive, and I can say that very openly because it goes from the one the individual lessons that they all have. So there's a lot of importance to be placed, and congratulations placed, if you like, to those people who've taught and inspired our students over the years. But then it's more of the, the, the kind of collective work that goes on there as well, the supportive work. Um, it's a very creative place, and there's a great number of opportunities for the students. It's something I, I kind of draw blood flow really is to, is to kind of help creating those opportunities and things that will give them a creative insight into what they're trying to do whilst whilst really pushing themselves to the height of what their instrument or particular slant of, of, of their musical study is. I think it, 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 it's not only will do, it has to. Um, we've been very keen as well, if I talk about the new building for, for a while, um, you know, there's, there's an outreach centre there, outreach community area, which which we really want to be used a lot by organisations, particularly in Manchester, the North West and further afield, uh, because that's a great inter interactive uh, process, I think, something that our students love doing, but also through the, the range of things that we do in the community already, we just, in a way, want to expand that. So that's, that's one aspect of it. The locality of it is very uh, exciting as well. It's caused one too difficult in terms of a building. You know, if somebody says build a build a music uh, establishment next to two railways, two rivers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you'd probably say no. Let's go outside the city. But actually, it's it's the vibrancy of the city and so forth that is one of the key pointers for why we decided to stay put. Um, further down the line, of course, one of the best historical buildings in the, in in the northwest is. Is, is the, the former home of Humphrey, Humphrey Cheatham himself and so that's why the plans have been very careful to enrich that so that there will be a visitor experience whatever phrase you wish to call it uh, in the future particularly when the, the, the older building the Palatine building it's known the one, the one that the music department calls home uh, is, is dust and rubble uh, but that once that building's gone down it will expose the medieval building right from well beyond the other side of the cathedral right the way through towards Victoria Station I have, not enough, um, and I'm not the only guilty person of that, but it's, 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 it's a staggering part of Humphrey's benefaction, if you like, the, the hostel for the 40 poor boys, which I gather he established before he'd even died, you know, somewhere for the, the orphans or even single parent kids to, to get some sort of trade learning. Um, but the library is just a fantastic uh, experience as well as a, as, as a resource, I know it's, it's a great place of them for resource and so forth but also it's it's something that um, should in a sense be more widely known by the public but having been at Cheetham long enough for now it's, there's a little bit of of that about the school as well is it, what's what's beyond the archway uh, and in a way that lots of things we've done within the schools be it concerts performances special events and so forth has been designed partly to pull people into the school the environs and the medieval building and of course especially without the library I suppose I'm happy really that there's so many, so many of them to choose from is number one. And also it's not just, I, I kind of, people always look for the people who are very obvious to track and be they the Jennifer Pikes, the Guy Johnsons, the Paul Lewis, the Stephen Huffs, you know, their, they, their individual exposure has grown a lot over the years, you know, with Stephen and Paul doing complete piano concerto series of proms last year and this. Um, but you've got the Gwilym Simcock, who's, who's now an, you know, a climbing name in the jazz world. You probably think he's an established name, but he's, he's a very sincere and honest guy. But there's lots of other people as well who perhaps are not in the more obvious public limelight, who are, you know, there's a couple of our students who are now professors in the States, and very respected they are, and you know, they're barely scratching 30, some of them. So, um, whilst it's easy to pick on those who have an exposure and who are making a name for themselves, um, you know, it's there's lots of others I, I, I hesitate to miss out but you, you know look at the London Symphony Orchestra and the principal guest conductor is Daniel Harding who's a former 
former student of Cheatham's, if he wasn't a Manchester United fan, everything would be fine, but there we go. Do it for the right reasons, enjoy it. Um, and maybe it's a question of not being frustrated by limitations. I was talking to somebody last week about this who said they, they'd love to play whatever it was, I think the violin or the piano again. And my experience has been if somebody's done that in childhood, and I mean you'll, you'll meet people, grannies, uncles, aunties who said, I wish I'd kept it up. Um, and I think sometimes if you've had some learning, it's a little easier to get that going. Obviously, as things get as we get older, things get a little uh, less less flexible. But um, as a general thing, if people have done something beforehand, it usually helps them to, to, to recapture, even if it's a 40, 50 year gap. But starting from scratch, it's a question of what pleasure you want to get from it, really. Uh, and it's usually a deeper understanding or a feel of connection with, with the music that they particularly love. So yeah, go for it. There's plenty of patient people out there who will help you. I think in, in a well, in a big sense, there's the atmosphere, which I, I can say, not just as my Cunian, but also from the point of view of of what Cheatham's is about. If I just digress a bit and say, well, you know, it feels like about seven, eight years ago, we 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 looked at what was it was costing to run a school and said, well, should we build somewhere else? Should we start fresh? Good money after bad, etc. And, and, and there was a great discussion of saying, well, let's go to a greenfield site outside the city. And it didn't take long to push that away to say, actually, no, we, we want to be part of the city, we want to be close to everything. So by saying the atmosphere, it's something that um, greatly influences our students. And I think in, in a lot of cases makes them choose to come to Cheatham's, perhaps over other institutions to say, we're right by the city. You know, young people like the, the vibrancy of city life in, in all of its, you know, all it has to offer, from cinemas, clubs, different music scene, etc. But you know, Manchester has kind of earned a reputation of being a, a go-for-it city, uh, a very strong place. Yeah. And um, do I get paid for all this advertising I do for Manchester, by the way? But, you know, seriously, it's, it, it is that sort of place. And it surprised me sometimes when, you know, National Football Museum is suddenly going to appear in Urbis, you know, um, which is great news for us as a school, I have to say, as well as, well as for the city. So, you know, it's kind of take your coat off and go for it in Manchester. It, there is a there is a there is a punch about Manchester, which is, I think, very captivating. And I and I hear that from people I meet in the music profession, both as professional players or educators like myself, who just say, "Well, it's Manchester, isn't it?" You know, there's a little bit of green eye about it, which I think is great. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Is that it? That's it.